Europe, 1940. Hitler's ruthless quest to extend Germany's borders has his people at war with the world. The mobilization of armies by Britain and France proves no deterrent as the Nazis invade their European neighbors to the north and west, while extending their reach eastward towards Russia's critical oil fields. By fall, Germany's lightning war to soften England is launched, and America increases production, racing to aid the British. By 1941, the battle for North Africa is on as Rommel's Africa Corps arrives in Tripoli. On the Eastern Front, an impatient Hitler breaks his pact with the Soviets. Stalin responds with a scorched earth policy, intent on leaving only ruins for the Nazi invaders. But one by one, his cities fall. Now, in 1942, massive German air raids commence against Stalingrad, and the battle for this noble city turns vicious. The Red Army refuses to retreat, and a counteroffensive is launched against a force that now stretches from the Volga to the Atlantic and deep into the African desert. Against impossible odds, millions come forward to answer the call of their countries, their families, their lives. My name is Alexander Sokolov. I thought I was safe. As a watchmaker's apprentice, I would learn the business, then open a shop of my own. Maybe get married, have children, start a life. But now our cities are under attack, and Stalingrad will put an end to those dreams. We should have known the Germans would turn on us, break the treaty. They have no honor. The commissars rounded us up so quickly, speaking of the motherland, the sacrifice of our brothers, our duty. I'm only 20, but I'm ready to fight to the death. The sight of my home, Stalingrad, infuriates me. It is as if hell itself were burning. Welcome to Stalingrad. You're about to begin the greatest moment of your life. The Germans have lost hundreds of tanks and planes. Hitler's brutalized hordes are now advancing towards Stalingrad over mountains of their own dead bodies. Our Bolshevik party, our nation, our great country have given us the task not to let the enemy reach the Volga and to defend the city of Stalingrad. The explosion will not be far off. Oh, 
Incoming fire! Here in the refinery. We need to flush them out before we get to the park. Follow my lead. Wait here. I not see devil. You over here. Pick up his rifle.
Mommy, of course, is just ahead. But first, we need to flush the Germans out of this building. Give us the signal to go. Open the door! I'll cover you! All day. I'm sorry you lost your sergeant, Comrade. We won't let his sacrifice go to waste. I've got a new job for you. The fascists are using the view from that bunker to call in artillery strikes all over the city. We can't take back Stalingrad unless we control that bunker. You lead the men up with you. Start by taking out the machine guns in those pillboxes. Stick to the trenches. I'll keep you covered from here. That Nazi flag must fall.
looks like I found myself in this book. My name is Tanya Pavlovna. We had little idea the Nazi invasion had pushed as far as our village until the night we awoke to the sound of tank tracks grinding in the distance. Tank shells sent my neighbors scurrying for cover. And in the chaos I was separated from my parents. The next day I was rescued by soldiers with the Red Army. I was 25. During my first skirmish our squad was cut down and I escaped into a collapsed building where I took a sniper rifle off the body of a fallen comrade. My father's voice guided my aim as I cut down my first four Germans with that rifle. My skill was reported to HQ and I was assigned as a sniper and sent to Stalingrad. I've been hunting Germans ever since. They took my family and my home, and I intend to take their lives. You've got a clear shot. What are you waiting for? An explosion. We need something to cover the sound of the rifle. Ah. And if I shoot enough of these Germans, they'll send a tank to come looking for us. Then we'll need to cover our sapper on the street so he can place a landmine in its path. This is it. Always try to shoot the officers first. Let's relocate. They still think we're over there. She moved to a different window. They've seen us. Tank. 
We have to go down to the sewers. Survival, we must work together.
to get through. Trench to the factory should be around here somewhere. Climb down the ladder, the factory is just past this hole in the wall. Tanya, hurry! The tractor factory is just ahead!
those old buildings are solid enough to resist shelling. We lose the Shermans, and we're all dead. to prove that we was as good as anybody. We had to prove that we could handle tanks, uh, gyro stabilizers, panoramic sights, all these technical things that belong in a tank. We shouldn't have had to do it, but we had to prove to America that we did it, which was a shame. The guys that are doing this thing, they're just fanatics on it, which is wonderful. And, and uh, you know, the young kids can actually see what their granddads did, you know, and, uh, and it actually comes home to them. And it, plus, it's, you know, it, it keeps you thinking all the time as well. So, and, so I love that kind of thing, you know. It's fascinating to me. Against impossible odds, millions come forward to answer the call of their countries, their families, their lives. Okay, really good. I do feel like you're rushing a bit, so you can slow down. You can slow down just a little really bit. Fast. Um, uh, and definitely, you can slow down on that last line, too, you know, against impossible odds. You know, you can really take your time to set up the drama. My father was in the Second World War. He was in the desert, fought in the desert with uh, the desert rats. 
and uh, the you know, Durham Light Infantry. And uh, then he went to Anzio. So, you know, with every now and again, he didn't talk about it much, but every now and again, we get little tidbits, little snippets of what really happened. And it fascinated us as three small boys. We just used to hang on to every word. So we had the speed, we had the durability, we had the tools to work with, but we still didn't have the armor. We only had four inches of armor. The Tiger Roy had 12. And you couldn't knock him out if you hit him in front. So we learned ourselves how to defeat him. 